what is up guys this is Tingo back with another video on Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna show you the Nusantara project version 4.5 Senila official build and this is the latest build of course 24th May 2022 is the build date and let me tell you yes I have done a previous video on this but today it's gonna be a little different because this is the first video that I'm doing after the device got a new life I would say because I have done CPU reballing on this Redmi Note 10 Pro because my front camera was broken and stuff if you haven't watched those videos I will link them in the cards so yes my front camera was like not working and finally I have fixed it with the CPU deballing thing from a local shop. I'll give the soft address in the description, don't worry. But let me actually show you the condition of the device right now. And here, if you're looking at the back and stuff, everywhere I don't see any kind of huge flaws or something. Like there is no marks or something like that in the back because the back, of course, was opened to actually fix the device. And yes, after the CPU deballing and stuff, I don't see any kind of huge marks or huge damages at all. And the device is actually in pretty much flawless condition even after it has been opened and the job in the like shop that has been done is really really good today I'm gonna actually explain how is my experience after doing the CPU revolving on this particular device so let's begin jumping into the settings panel yes still it looks like this and if you want to go into the about section here and inside Android version section this is how it is looking like still and we have the Nusantara project kind of logo right there and we have the Nusantara version as 4.5 the build date is mentioned over here again and we have the similar story then we have the maintainer of course as BMW and we have the Android version as Android L and if I make this clock to this 12 o'clock, but it still shows this older Android 12 kind of Easter egg. It doesn't have the newer Android 12 L kind of Easter egg still, but that's how it is. The security patch is latest of May 5th, 2022. And I have been daily driving on this ROM after doing the CPU revolving, of course. And the experience overall has been really amazing. In the system panel, we are still getting the gestures. So we do have the like press and hold power button, toggle torch and stuff and we have the system navigation gestures in the settings you can actually change the thickness of it the radius and the pill length of course and the pill margin from bottom the full screen gestures are there back gesture animation and stuff is there and if you see we have the swipe to invoke assistant so google assistant should be working fine and we have the two button and three button navigation as well the quick tap or the back tap function is there and we have the other features and of course the swipe rig screenshot and stuff are working fine we have the share edit and delete option and stuff for those and of course daily driving on this rom was awesome and everywhere you have the customizations over here i'm not going to show you the customizations on this video because i have shown everything on the previous video i'll link it in the cards or the description do check them out if you are looking for the customizations but first let's talk about the camera of course this rom comes with miui camera by default and with that the overall experience is good we are like seeing that the ultra wide angle lens is working perfectly fine then the 2x option is still working and the main sensor is of course working fine then if you are looking for the macro sensor as you can see the macro lens is working perfectly fine too right now if i switch to the front camera and as you can see the front camera is working fine too as of right now so yes the front camera has been fixed i'm really happy about it and even in custom roms it's working fine after doing the CPU reballing. And in the video section, let me actually show you. You can actually shoot 1080p 30 FPS video over here. So that's great. And we have all these like new features on this MIUI camera, like the subtitles and stuff. And if you are shooting videos, let me show you. We have up to 4K 30 FPS option for the rear camera. So that's great. For the main sensor, you are getting up to 4K 30 FPS. And of course, you can shoot 1080p 60 FPS too if you want it. Pro video mode and stuff. They should be working great over here too also the portrait mode is working fine even with the front camera and stuff so no issues whatsoever i have taken a couple of selfies and they are working perfectly fine let me actually take one so as you can see taking a picture is not a problem at all and it takes like pretty quickly the pictures i mean so yeah overall switching to the front camera is not a problem anymore and it used to getting stuck like this kind of screen but right now it is working perfectly fine and that is a really like amazing thing but let me tell you after doing the cpu reballing overall while using the device and stuff i have seen the device is getting a lot less heated up so maybe there was a thermal issue i think so because earlier the device used to get a lot hotter when taking photos or something like that when using the camera for a long time or when doing heavy multitasking and stuff I have seen the Redmi Note 10 Pro is actually reaching 42 to 44 degrees in the battery. And yes, right now that has been fixed, I would say almost because 
let me actually show you i'm like opening the camera and stuff like scrolling through the ui let me show you the battery temperature is right now at 36 degrees celsius yes this is an ac room but still i have seen it going about 40 degrees even when the device is idle so yeah i feel it's the temperatures of the device that was increasing earlier before doing the cpu revolving so yes xiaomi really needs to like work on their thermals i think to actually fix the problems of the motherboards after doing the cpu revolving again the temperatures are a lot less that i have been noticing but i am not really sure what is the actual cause but yes after doing the job again the thermals are a lot lesser and i have seen the temperatures are hovering around between 35 to 38 degrees as of right now so yes if your redmi note 10 pro's front camera was stuck and if you are willing to do the cpu revolving and i will recommend do it from a good shop if you are sure of it definitely do your cpu revolving it will actually fix your device and right now let me show you in the battery settings we have the thermal profiles and stuff we have all these options and you can use per app here we have the battery saver and the adaptive battery settings and stuff and in the battery saver we have a scheduling option too and talking about the battery life let me actually show you i have tested it with the aku battery app and here let me show you i have got about nine hours of screen on time if you're noticing so the battery life overall was great i haven't had any such issues in the health section it shows as my device's battery health is about 94 percent which is quite decent i would say now talking about charging yes here also let me show you by the way i charge the device overnight so i charge up to a hundred percent so with that if you're noticing this is the average charging speed so 1800 ma over here while the screen was on it was charging at 2389 average so yeah this is the average charging speed but i would say if the battery's like temperature is really low and if the percentage is low as well it will charge at about 4000 ma if you're using a 33 watt fast charger so fast charging was not actually a problem for me it actually went fine and overall like the charging speed and the battery life on this particular rom has been really really good now overall let's talk about the stability over here i would say the stability of this rom has been increased and as you can see scrolling through the ui is not a problem anymore advanced reboot and stuff options are there and in the dark theme everything turns dark over here like pitch black you can get it and we have the heads up etc disabling option and here we also have the moto or dolby audio that is actually working fine i have been using of course with 120 hertz all the time and the google home controls are there the screen recorder option is there we get the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time so all these things are still present and they should be working perfectly fine here i have been using this rom as my rally driver i haven't had any issues also in the home screen we get the pixel launcher over here and with that the widgets and stuff and the animations of them are working perfectly fine to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and swiping down anywhere in the home screen again we get the quick setting panel swiping up we get the app drawer pretty basic stuff and they are working perfectly fine everywhere in the ui the scrolling is much much smoother i would say and in the security we still have the face unlock and fingerprint option both of course i have added the face unlock and i have used the when swiping up on lock screen also i have added two fingerprints over here let me go back we also have the app lock and here in the protected apps you can find any particular app that you want to lock and let me lock some particular apps like this and here if i open the particular app as you can see this is how it looks like and again if i want to open some other apps this is how it looks like by the way this bug is there when it shows the other settings that you were on earlier so yes this is how it is as you can see it just shows in the background that which settings you were on so this is a like android source code bug i would say so this is how it is but except for that let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and the face unlock speed so here if i double tap on the status bar and it goes to sleep of course i don't have the always on display turned on so i just double tap to sleep and it is working fine it is in the lock screen right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner it unlocks perfectly fine let me actually enable the always on display and with the always on display this is how it looks like in the always on display and it looks beautiful of course and i can tap the fingerprint scanner just like this and as you can see it unlocks so yeah very fast and reliable fingerprint scanner speed i would say no issues whatsoever for that i have faced with the fingerprint scanner speed over here also talking about the face unlock let me actually show you i just double tap over here and if i swipe up then only it will recognize my face and if you're noticing the black border is pretty so as you can see right now it has worked and once you are using the face unlock just notice how big that black border becomes whenever you are using the front camera and as you can see it unlocks fine whenever i point the device towards my face 
and the double tap to wake has been fixed right now and it is working perfectly fine sometimes i'm seeing the face unlock is not working so let me try one more time so yes it's taking a lot longer i would say sometimes but sometimes it unlocks fine so face unlock might be a little bit buggy because sometimes it's taking too long but as you can see right now it's unlocking super fine no issues so yeah face unlock sometimes is taking a little bit longer but otherwise the face unlock works perfectly fine no issues now let's talk about the basic things see yes, still the ir blaster is working fine if you're noticing no issues whatsoever with the ir blaster also if you are wondering about the safety net yes it passes right out of the box still so you can use banking apps without any problems also the dm info stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p and of course you will get all the links if you don't know how to actually flash this rom on your device and in the sound settings we still have all these options and this is how the volume panel looks like by the way we still have this device changing option over here that's great and we have the dolby atmos settings right here and of course you can customize the dolby atmos from here this rom also has the mi audio direct and we have the youth edition and stuff right here and then we have the sound presets changing option also the select scene option is there there is a smart music video and voice also the hi-fi audio option we get the sound quality via the headphone jack or bluetooth or even the speakers are really good over here i haven't had any issues with those also we have the haptic feedback level customization here so you can customize that and the overall haptic feedback experience was really great in the display settings we have all these things like the adaptive or auto brightness the dark theme and the colors are saturated right now and we have the minimum maximum refresh rate the double tap to wake is there and the full screen apps and app refresh rate option is there so you can particularly set per apps refresh rate from right here by the way let me tell you there is no dc dimming option in this particular rom but there is that android 12's extra dim feature but then again you don't see any kind of dc dimming feature on this rom in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like and of course we have the dark theme the accent color changing option and the basic colors and stuff the themed icons are there the app create option is there also we have the system icon packs and if you want to you can actually go with the accurate one and with the Acuras one, let me actually show you how it looks. So this is how it looks with the Acuras one. And even in the quick setting panel, it actually changes the pattern of the icons. Looks beautiful, I would say. Also talking about Volte calling and stuff. Yes, they are working fine, obviously. And we have the call recording option too for here. And this is the Google dialer that is present by default. And the call recording and stuff should be working great with this one. And overall performance of this ROM was great. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the latest build of the Nusantara ROM based on Android 12 L on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Shiro from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.